What's up everyone? Welcome to another day on our Florida slash Southeast trip. We are here at SeaWorld Orlando, which is an awesome park. I can't wait to be back here. This park, as of next year, will have the most B&Ms of any park in the world. Right now, they're just trailing Six Flags Great Adventure in New Jersey. And one of those B&Ms is one I have not been on before, and that's Pipeline the Surf Coaster. And that's a prototype attraction. It's new. A lot of people have been saying it was like the sleeper hit of last year. So I'm really looking forward to get on that. It looks to have some very unique forces. As well as that, the current lineup I have experience, Mako, Manta, Kraken, even Icebreaker, all really awesome rides actually. This park is beautiful. I love how it blends animals and rides. It is terrific and it's also your first time. It's my first time and I'm so excited to experience everything here and there shouldn't be many people here because even though it's a Saturday, it's raining a lot of the day. So hopefully that scared a lot of people away and we should get a lot of rides in and I'm really excited. As she said, it has been raining the first few hours of the park's opening. So we actually got here a little late. I think there, it's definitely looking to be pretty quiet. This parking lot is not filled at all. But yeah, here's Pipeline. It looks great in the front of the park. Wow, look at that. It's stunning. And I've always said this park really needed a front gate roller coaster to attract people in. And this is beautiful. It's pretty much exactly what they needed. So let's head inside. It's looking like we might do Manta, the B&M flying coaster first, a great ride. Let's do this. As we walk through the entrance of Manta, which is sporting a five minute wait on a Saturday, how awesome is that? I do just wanna say thank you to SeaWorld Orlando for providing complimentary admission for today. It's gonna to be a great time. Let's head in. SeaWorld Orlando is pouring, literally opens everything. Six flags over Georgia, one drop of rain, shuts the whole park on the last day of the season. All right, it's time for Manta. And as you can see, the main selling point with this type of ride is you are on your stomach facing down at the ground in a prone position, and off we go. What I'm gonna try to do for this POV is I'm gonna tilt my camera up so you guys can see the layout because facing the ground is not very interesting. Oh God, it's frightening up here. The rain was just flying into my eyes. That combined with my the hair in my face, because I have long hair, I can't see anything. But it was still so good. Well, Vietnam flying coasters in the rain, I just discovered is like a very epic experience. The water flying all up in your face, it's so fun and disorienting. That pretzel loop, I mean, what can you say about the pretzel loops? It hasn't already been said. It's one of the most forceful elements on any coaster on the planet. But the rest of the ride is also really fun, graceful, flying over the park. And what I love particularly about this flying coaster, Manta, is you are just surrounded by rock work and vegetation and you're getting so close to it. The near misses are great. And that's what really makes this ride for me. That is so much better than any of those Superman clones where you're just meandering around. Like I actually felt like I was flying and that was insane. The water in my face, that literally felt like a water attraction. Like that was crazy. Yeah, that was, that was pretty insane. awesome. That was so fun. I need to do that again later. Oh, we really just hit the jackpot today, didn't we guys? Pipeline, five minute wait. This is gonna be sweet. Wow, we're on Pipeline. Front row too. I am really pumped to see how this feels. There is no other ride on the planet that even remotely compares to how unique this experience of standing airtime will be. It's so weird. 
Ende. That was even weirder than I ever expected it to feel. It feels like you're like jumping. It feels like you're on a pogo stick. That was really cool. And honestly, it felt even more different than I could have ever expected. Yeah. It's interesting how the seats go up and down to corresponding forces. So when you're getting positive, you're actually going down to kind of build you up for the airtime moments where you were launched upwards. It's a very interesting ride. Honestly, it's extremely hard for me to explain because I really haven't experienced anything like that. So if you haven't already, come down to SeaWorld Orlando and try it. It's definitely worth coming here alone for um, just because of how interesting that feels. There's no other coaster that feels like that. It feels like you're like jumping. I don't know. It's crazy. It and does. It happens like on basically every element. Like it's such a cool sensation. I've never felt something like that. Yeah, some to a greater extent though. Like this twisted hill is definitely incredibly fun. I love the airtime hill on the launch. That's also very cool. And also there's like a twisted hill way out in the end. That's also really fun. Yeah, I definitely approve. I think that's a lot of fun. Definitely the sleeper hit of 2023. A lot of people were saying that and now I definitely get it. Also presentation on this thing, beautiful. It yes. looks so good. It's so well presented. I love how much effort this park puts into their presentation. They don't just plop the ride down and call it a day. Which is so really strange for a SeaWorld park. A lot of SeaWorld parks nowadays don't really put effort into presenting their rides well. A lot of their newer coasters look kind of bland. Look at Emperor. Oh, Pantheon, Kong. Pantheon, Emperor, Iron Gwazi, they all kind of look bland. And it's, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like this ride has gobs of theming, but what they did to make it look good is terrific, and I really commend them for that. Let's get a back row ride, and I want you guys to see just how much your feet comes off the surfboard. This is gonna be cool. We got a feet POV. Free feet pics here at Coaster Dash. Y'all didn't even need a sub to my OF. <laughs> It's so much fun. No idea. That's so true. Wow. Oh that, that's better than any OF content you're going to find out there, guys. <laughs> Alright, it's time for Icebreaker, Premier Rides quadruple launching roller coaster. Lots of really cool elements on this one. And also, a change from when the last time I rode this in 2022 is it now only has lap bar restraints instead of comfort collars, which is definitely a welcome change. This guy's just like chilling here. Hey! Yeah, I think he's gonna transfer another train on. Um, yeah, we're, so yeah, it's very strange. We're gonna switch over to the launch section and then actually start backwards, which is pretty interesting. So, uh, yeah. Let's do it. Woo! Woo! That's fun. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, this airtime does get pretty crazy. Here we go. Woo! Whoa! Oh yep, and then the airtime oh gets really good this time around. Woo! Whoa! Ready? That's one of the That's best coasters time. Premier Rides has ever built. Really good oh yeah, very good airtime. 
We just got off of Icebreaker and that is running super well. And I love that it only has lap bars now because it really accentuates the airtime on this coaster. And there's a lot of airtime, very strong airtime. It's not something you would expect from a coaster by Premier Rides. I think they did a great job. It has excellent pacing. The back and forth launch at the start is really interesting. I personally think it could do with like one less launch. Uh, I don't really know why there needs to be four because it's already not that tall of a ride, but I guess it's kind of fun as it builds anticipation and the airtime just gets stronger and stronger on the launches, which is pretty cool. I thought it was so fun. It was so enjoyable. I like the like I like that there were four launches. It, like it's a fun build up. The airtime during the launches is like so fun and the airtime throughout the whole thing is so fun. Like it's very intense airtime. I did not expect that. I really enjoyed that. It's, it's a very, very smooth. good ride. Oh, it is. Oh, it's so smooth too. Yeah. This it's destroys so nice. any Skyrocket too. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. Easily. Mm -hmm. This is technically the Skyrocket 3 model, but this absolutely destroys any Skyrocket too. All right, let's head to Mako. Yeah. What kind of bird is that in front of Mako? What? That thing looks like a flamingo crossed with a duck. If every bird we've seen in Florida subscribed, we would have so many subscribers. Oh yeah. Off we go on Mako! Front row. Their operations, they're killing it on this thing. Oh, I'm so excited to be back on this. And the music is so theatrical. I'm gonna make y'all sit through this lift hill because this is awesome. Fairfield Inn, let's go. If y'all check in there, ask for the Coaster Dash room. Okay, here we go. Oh my God. It's just graceful and it's running silky smooth after several years of operation. Three rides on Mako, two of which we didn't even need to get off the train for. Front and back row experience and that is such an incredible <laughs> ride. That's like a perfect, like they just perfected the model. And yeah, like they put did. It there. Like what the hell? It's so good. The it's so smooth. is insane in both the front and the back. It just like, oh my God, I don't know. It's insane. It's This park has like all these airtime machines. Like. It's, inc it's insane here, it's insane. This park's lineup has just gotten so impressive. I completely agree with the sentiment that it's the coaster capital of Orlando. I do personally think Islands of Adventure has the two best coasters in Orlando, Velocicoaster as well as Hagrid's after we experienced that yesterday. I used to have Mako just above Hagrid's, but I think I'm flip-flopping them. Nevertheless, the sheer collection of the coasters here, I think surpasses Islands of Adventure. It's just so complete here. And Mako is a great ride. Definitely my favorite ride in the park. It's such a good headliner. The amount of airtime on that is incredible and it's so smooth, so graceful, so much fun, so re-rideable. So we'll definitely have to get more rides on that later today. Super fun ride. Whoa! No way that thing is real. It looks like they literally painted it on. I can't see. So we were just on the way to Kraken after a nice food break, and you can see here the white B&M track in front of me. What is that? Well, it's Penguin Trek, their new coaster opening later this year. Actually a family coaster, which is very unique for a B&M coaster, but also a really nice fit here in SeaWorld Orlando's lineup because I really think they need a family-friendly coaster. I really hope they theme this well because it has a lot of potential to be a great ride. But look at that thing, it looks beautiful. 
I am looking forward to this edition. It's time for Kraken, one of the best B&M floorless coasters out there. This ride has such a cool layout. Five minute wait again, you, this is a blessing. Unreal, unreal, best day of the year. And it's a Saturday, like you wouldn't expect it. The floor is about to drop, and there we go. We are on Kraken. This is the park's OG B&M. It opened in the year 2000 and it's still kicking butt. Here we go. Honestly, same. And we're at the top. This color scheme actually does look like the Incredible Hulk at Islands, but it's beautiful. I like it. Oh, wow. The new look at the owl at the top. What the heck? All right. Here we go. Over the water. shaky today but into the second half into the tunnel here we go Thing. You can feel that it's from the year 2000. We got to do it in the back though. I think the back is a little bit smoother than the front on floorless coasters usually, but still a very good layout and very intense. Just got ourselves two rides on Kraken. We did it once in the front and then once in the back off camera. And definitely the back row is my favorite on that. It's quite intense. As you can see with the inversions behind us, especially in the second half, it's actually quite compact, which I really enjoy. The first half is pretty standard and typical for a b and floorless, but nothing to scoff at. Still a really enjoyable ride. A little bit shaky around the edges, but it's to be expected with a coaster that opened in the year 2000 by B&M, but. I think it was fun. I don't know, floorlesses just don't really stand out to me, but it is an enjoyable ride. It is really good. It does a lot. I don't know, there's nothing bad to say about it. Yeah, I definitely would say though, I like Pipeline more, I like Icebreaker more. It's definitely like number five in the park for me. It's fallen down the list as they've added more coasters, but I still don't think they should remove it at all. Like it's still very fun, very enjoyable ride. Up next, we're gonna be heading to Journey to Atlantis, which is a very interesting water coaster. Actually, mostly dark ride. It's hardly a roller coaster at all. It's very cool and I'm looking forward to getting back on it. Best part about Atlantis is the soundtrack. It's so good. It's so funky too. Like no other coaster soundtrack sounds like this. I have no idea what this is about to do. You're gonna like it. It's mostly dark ride. It's a very chill ride. Unfortunately, it's pretty dark for you guys, so you can't see everything, but it's very yeah, beautiful. It really cool. It's very nice. Very atmospheric too. You know the drill, the bottom of the drop, you duck. Wow, great view of the rest of the park. And it's time for the biggest drop on the ride. Here we are. Oh, shoot. Whoa! Hey, not bad. Yeah, that felt really good, actually. Wow, look at that thing. Beautiful architecture, yeah. All of you who have ever gotten drenched on Journey to Atlantis know to be deathly afraid of this tiny little like two foot drop here. That's so weird. It's so weird and I don't know why it exists, but it does. I'm hoping we're unaffected in the back. I think we will be. Yeah, that was fine. That was okay. That didn't affect us. Whew, because in the front you really get like a wave of water. Wow, okay, here we go. The music is so I good. I still don't see how this is a coaster. You'll yet. see, you'll see. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> As you heard by that sound, we are now on roller coaster track. <laughs> I just did a roller coaster. We are now on roller coaster track. This is what makes it a credit. Down we go. Not 
not bad at all. Oh, what the hell was that? That's so weird. Yeah, that's it's fun, really though. barely a roller coaster. Yeah, of all the Atlantises, I think that one's actually the least coaster. However, it's easily the best. Weird. From a dark ride perspective and just enjoyment perspective, it's a lot of fun. It's a classic. All right, well, SeaWorld's been great so far. We've gotten a ton of rides in. It's actually 4.10 right now. I think we're gonna be heading out of the park in just a second to go to Fun Spot America Kissimmee. It's one of two Fun Spot parks they have here in the Orlando area. That will be a separate vlog, so stay tuned. That'll be out in just a few days' time. But I'm gonna pick up after we get back to SeaWorld from Fun Spot Kissimmee. We will be returning for night rides, and I hope to capture a few nighttime POVs for you guys then. SeaWorld's been so lit. It's been so fun. Not even that busy. Yeah, it's so not busy. We've gotten so many rides in, like five on Mako, three on Pipeline, multiple on Icebreaker, and whatever the other, th oh, Crack It. I don't know, everything. We've gotten so many rides, and it's been so good. It's gotten more crowded as the day went on, the weather got nicer, but it's still, like, not bad. It's still manageable. Like, Mako is basically just a walk-on. Yeah. Um, other things are a bit longer, but it's still really good. We've had a really good day here. I thought it would be super crowded because it's a Saturday, but it's the least crowded day of our trip so far. All right, I'll see you guys later. Fast forward to nighttime, three, two, one. All right, we are back. We're about to get on Mako for a night ride. It's cool to be back here at night. We've actually already done quite a few things off camera. Manta, Pipeline, now we're doing this. Who knows how many rides we're gonna be getting on this thing. It's still five minutes. It's gonna be a lot of fun to marathon at night. We out here, it's looking real good. This thing's Let's gonna go, be flying. Mako, Let's, Let's go! go. It needs to be studied. It needs to be studied. <laughs> what the hell? How do they do that? Sorry, nitro and intimidator <laughs> no, and can and candemonium. Like all y'all are tripping. It literally lasts the bottom of the hill. Oh, it's such a good ride. Probably the highlight of the day. We just oh got 10 God. rides on Mako at night on a without Saturday leaving without the leaving station. the station. On a Saturday. What's How was that? that even possible? I feel completely <laughs> wiped out right now. It is closed now, I think. Yeah, it's 9.02. <laughs> That was just, I can't believe that. I did not expect that. 10. And it, like, we didn't even have to move rows that often. Like, what the hell? We were in the same row like six times in a row. What the hell? That was so fun. I'm so tired, but like, oh my God. We're walking out of SeaWorld now and it was a fantastic day. Definitely the least crowded day of the trip so far, which is just insane for a Saturday. Who would have thought? Yeah, that was really an impeccably enjoyable day. Thank you so much to SeaWorld Orlando for having us out today. And all the rides that we got to do were incredible. What do you think of the park overall? This park is so nice. They care a lot about their presentation. I don't know, it's just a really good park. There's really, I don't have any complaints. It's so nice here. And all the rides were incredible. Every ride was so good. Every ride had its thing. Every ride was so good. And that was just a really enjoyable day because of the crowds. I think every time I come to SeaWorld Orlando, I'm impressed by how much I have fun here. Every time I like it more. And I'd say this is just been my favorite visit I've ever spent here and in part because Pipeline the new coaster I got to do for the first time was, was absolutely so awesome definitely one of the top three rides in the entire park now for me all right now I hope you all enjoyed and we'll see you tomorrow from Universal Studios Florida bye guys <laughs> this music has such a dramatic end to the video